Now, I've been thinking about making this cave video for a really long time, but... I say, old chap, why are you making a house in a cave? We are used to making grand structures. Well, because that's what the subs asked for. And I thought, it's not something I usually do, let's do it. Go and drink your tea elsewhere. Well, I can't argue with that. Tally-ho! So we're going to be making a cave house today. Now, some of you may have gone round your world and come across randomly generated structures like these. They look like a cave, but when you go in, you just come out the other side. And you think, what a waste of time. But I think they could actually be really well placed to have a house. They're already there, but with a few minor adjustments, we can turn it into a pretty good looking house. Now, for the most part, I expect people to do this. They go ahead, seal up each side with wood and make something on the inside that really doesn't fit. What I want to do is come up with a design that really screams cave. It doesn't pretend to be something it's not. We're not making a wooden house, we're just accentuating the fact that we're living in a cave. And that's the whole point of this video, to try and make the cave into a home, but not lose the character of the cave itself. This is going to be in first person, so I hope that I can get this across as quickly as possible, but not speeding it up so everyone feels sick. Right, let's get on with the cave. So these are the blocks that we're going to need. Andesite, stone, cobblestone, cobblestone stairs, slab, wall, a bunch of stone bricks, cracked stone brick, dirt, and some spruce wood along with trap doors. So a lot of gray blocks. Now this is to maintain the look of the cave. So you're gonna want to collect as much of this as possible before you begin. So let's get on with it. The first thing we need to do is actually cover up one half of this cave. The concept of this tutorial does apply to multiple cave variations, but this specifically goes to the ones where you literally walk through. So I have two entrances to the cave here, and this is the larger of the two. For the time being, I'm going to be using stone to cover it up, and then we will change this later. The logic I'm using on the placement is as far forward as possible, but allow some space for you to edit the overhang so it looks a little more like it's got some depth to it. So that's a pretty good place to start, it's nice and in line, but we can add some grass on the top, like I said, to add a little bit of depth to it. And editing the terrain is a real trick to making this cave work. You don't have to be completely set with what the random generation gave you. I'm going to be putting my door in the middle, but you have to work with your cave on whatever looks best. You will probably have to edit the terrain because we're going to be using slabs in order to get down to our cave entrance. We do need to elongate it because slabs obviously take a lot longer to go down in terms of length. They go half a block down, but they take a full block in length. So by fiddling around with our entrance, we can actually make something that looks really natural, but at the same time, it's clearly been edited by someone. By placing in the slabs, you get a very natural look, but if you make it too perfect, for example, having it at complete right angles every time, it looks a little bit strange. What I like to do in these situations is break it up by having some slabs and some staircases. Imperfection, I find, especially when dealing with natural terrains, just helps it blend in and look a lot more natural, and I'm going to be talking about making it look natural and making it fit, because that's how this cave build works. So we're going to be working on the front now for a little bit. Now I know that we built it out of stone, that was just to get the placeholder down. What we're going to be doing next is decorating this through texture. We need to replace all of this stone with a mixture of all of those blocks that we've got. We will also need to edit the terrain. You'll notice that I've got a lot of staircases in there and I'm just playing about with what looks good and what doesn't. The staircases really help it look like it's got some structure and not just a flat faced wall. I'm now completely going to transform what this is made out of. When I'm done with it, there's going to be very little stone. And if you find this boring, you're not going to like this build because there's an awful lot of changing the textures. Fortunately, I have welded it and I don't need to do this normally, but for those of you that are doing it completely vanilla, you're going to find this a little bit stressful. You can see how the texture of this, although it's only changed into variations on the grey blocks, it's made such a stark difference in how it looks. Using the andesite, the cracked stone brick, and a mixture of stone, 
really makes it look more weathered and natural looking. But once you've done that, you will want to attempt to do what I'm doing here with the trap doors. I like the look of this because it looks so temporary. It doesn't look like it's meant to last forever. It looks like someone is temporarily living in a cave with whatever they could get their hands on as resources. Trying to create an atmosphere through building is just as difficult as making a good looking building in the first place. And using these blocks together, not only do they synergize with their colors, it just looks fantastic and atmospheric. But the terraining is never done on a job like this. Making the front of the cave house is very minor in comparison to how much terraining that has to be done. It's all about the overall effect. If the front of the cave doesn't fit the surroundings, it's going to look a little bit silly. So you do need to remove some of the dirt and add in those grey blocks at random places. So a lot of andesite, a lot of cobblestone, a lot of cracked bricks. But overall, I think we've got a fairly good looking. And then we're going to go ahead and start terraining the inside of the cave before we even touch the other entrance to our house. And in fact, it's probably going to end up being very similar to what we just made on the other side. What I'm going to be doing here is very difficult to explain because when I'm editing the inside of a cave, I'm literally going by what looks good. I have a general idea and I will go over what I think you should be attempting to do. However, a cave will not generate the same thing. You guys cannot copy me block for block because the cave that you are trying to do this on will look vastly different to mine. So I'm going to have to just try and explain what I'm doing. The first thing is quite obvious, I'm making it shallower. So if it's quite a deep cave, you don't want to have a very steep incline. This is natural of course, because you don't want to be going up and down really steep hills when you're inside your own house. The other thing is I'm making it taller. You will want to edit the ceiling to be as high as possible, which may be difficult when you're in a cave like mine, which is incredibly close to the surface. Not only will you come across lots of dirt, which you will want to replace with stone or a mixture of all the gray blocks, but you will also break into the surface. So you need to just have a lot of dirt prepared. So if you do break in, you can just replace it or even set a layer on the surface itself if you find that you haven't got enough height. Now, unfortunately, this segment is actually quite boring to watch. So I'm going to try and show some like clips of what I'm doing without showing you the whole thing because you really will get the idea. Look, I'm just replacing the dirt with stone, heightening the cave. It really is simple as that. And I could show you the whole thing, but ultimately I'd waste five minutes of your time. Now onto the other side, we're going to start shallowing out the rest of it. Much like we did with the side that we've already completed, we will pull out each layer just to elongate it, making sure that you're not walking up any completely steep slopes. And as I said earlier, you're going to have to do this bit a little bit by eye with the interior terraining of this cave. However, a good point to make is that elongating the sides and having the walkway be a natural place in the middle where we're going to put half slabs and you'll see where that comes into play in a moment. But for now, let's work on the other side of our cave. This entrance is a lot smaller, so I would prefer to say that the one we've already done is the front and this is the back. However, they can both have a door. It's up to you how you want to do this. You could just seal it up and have no entrance here whatsoever. It's up to you. So using a similar technique to what we used at the front, we can recreate that grey scale entrance without too much bother, just using a bit of cobblestone staircase to decorate and integrate that entrance into the landscape. I didn't have to do nearly as much work on this side than I did the other. Once we've done that, we can then go ahead and finish off just replacing all of that dirt with stone. And I really can't stress enough how important it is to make sure you don't have any dirt. It's such an unsightly block and really ruins the interior feel of your cave. Dirt has no place in these kind of houses. But once you have your general shape along the floor, it's time to start adding those cobblestone slabs and staircases. The way I'm doing it 
is my preferred method. If you prefer something more perfect and less rugged, go for it. It is your cave and it will look way different to what I'm making. This is more the technique behind it. But ensuring that you have a smooth walk from A to B inside your cave is a very important thing to do. But once you've replaced all of your dirt, you may find that you have a very straight ceiling indeed. Now this is fine because we're going to edit it later, much like we're editing the floor now with our slabs and staircases. You can see that there's a mixture of about 25% staircase and 75% slabs when connecting these layers together, but they really do make a huge difference. Now I'm going to speed things up just a little bit to move things on, but essentially we're going to be using the same technique that we have on the floor with the staircases and the slabs, only this time we will be missing out some blocks and that will become apparent why in a minute. It's just to again integrate those counter levels on the ceiling to try and break up some of those contour lines that natural generation produces. It looks better already, the cobblestone really mixes well with the stone. Okay, wait, 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 one minute. Before I do the next bit, I want to apologize first because you're not gonna like it. Yes, I'm going to cheat and use some world edit, but it's more for your benefit than mine. I could have easily recorded myself replacing every single block with a variation of the gray blocks that we've been using for the front entrance and the back, but it would be so boring to watch. So what I have done is just quickly used world edit and replaced the stone with the percentage that I want it to and it will randomly do it for me. If you want to do it by hand, which you may have to if you don't have world edit, I'll put the percentages up on the screen for you so that you know roughly what to aim for but doing this by hand will have exactly the same result. I really love the look of this and it's such an easy thing to do if you can be bothered. So I've just added a couple of spruce doors because honestly they're my favourite kind of doors and we really have the shell of our cave house and it's time to start detailing it. And a good place to start is with the lighting. Using a spruce fence is an excellent choice for this type. Not only does the colour synergize really well with the rest of the cave, I know that we're, we're talking about grey and brown, but they are two of my favourite colours. I'm not that boring guys, I just really like those colours. But it is an amazing addition to our cave. Not only can you make these support beams that fit in really nicely, just make sure that you place them off to the side, not directly in the middle where you want to be walking, and then place one underneath a torch. You can really light up the cave without it looking out of place or amateurish. If you have a flat space on your ceiling, you may want to consider adding some stalactites. Cobblestone wall is the obvious choice of block here, but it is just for aesthetics and you don't need to make them too long and only place them if you have the height available to you. I have made sure that my cave is very tall so that it, anything like this with the decorations doesn't get in my way. But like I said, making a mess on the top isn't a big deal. It's part of the cave and it's part of the character of this build. The more rugged it looks, the more at home you feel. Okay, so now that we've covered some of the more natural designs, let's take a step back and go into the designs that we used on the outside, on the inside. Again, I will point out that this build is about atmosphere and a cave isn't full of paintings and carpets and statues and that kind of things. It's more about living rough. And if you can get that across, then I think that the build will be a success. However, we are going to add a bedroom where we do have a carpet and a painting, but I promise you it should look like it all fits. It's all about perspective. So all I've done here is just decorate a furnace. You would put a furnace in your house normally, but by adding these trap doors and the spruce pillars, you can really make it look more at home. And not only that, you can accentuate the location. Because everything is gray, Finding a furnace isn't going to be easy for someone's eyes, so just by outlining it with a nice touch, 
is an excellent way to make it stand out more. Now the next bit is entirely optional. Because we have so many grey blocks, the floor, the ceiling and the walls are all exactly the same. Acacia Log breaks up that texture boundary so that we can differentiate the floor a lot more from the surrounding textures. There's a lot of greys going on and there's almost a grey science going on. But hopefully you agree with me and you understand where I'm coming from. It's all about that atmosphere, all about the textures and the feel of things. And I think Acacia Log was the perfect choice for this. So we've pretty much got our main room finished. We can go ahead and add some storage, so you may need to edit the terrain afterwards when you realise you haven't got enough space like me, but you can easily just knock a hole in and add some chests with a little bit of decoration. I tend to add two chests on top of each other with that separation fence and along with some trapdoors on the top just to literally top it off. But again, editing the shape of your cave is probably going to be necessary. Don't be rigid with your design. If you need to expand, expand. And I know that probably sounds quite annoying if you spent so long replacing all of these blocks. Overall, I think this room looks really cool. There's a couple of things you can add, mostly to personal taste. If you need some extra lighting, glowstone with the appropriately coloured carpet will do perfectly in this situation. Place them at your leisure wherever you feel like it. So you may have noticed I added that little hole there, that's going to be the bedroom. But I think there's just a couple more things we can do. Decorating again with trapdoors. I did say at the start we're going to need a hell of a lot of trapdoors. So again, simple designs using the same technique really work well here. So I'm pretty happy with this design. Let's start knocking out the bedroom. This is going to take a while, especially as this is not going to be part of the natural generation of the cave. So we want to try and match what we have but that's always going to be difficult considering the base of the design came from the seed generation in the first place. So I'm not going to show you the entire thing, I'm just going to show you the end result with a few clips in between, but the main point is it's not a huge room, it's definitely not bigger than the main one, and that's important because the bedroom needs to feel like a bedroom. If it's way bigger than your main room, then it's not really a bedroom, maybe your main room is. So this is a really nice size and you need to match the palette that we've used with all the different grey blocks and decorate it the same way we did before. The difference in here is that the floor can be completely flat and it look okay. This is your bedroom so it needs to look a little bit more homely but again still have that theme of the cave. So by decorating the roof and not the floor, we can really start to get that feel going on both sides. The homeliness of the bedroom, but the roughness of the cave. And stalactites really work well in this situation. Then we can go ahead and start decorating. Adding the bed, adding some lighting on the floor, mixed in with some carpet. And there's a cool little technique you can do to bring some depth to your carpet. Replace the floor with red wool and then have carpet somewhere in between so you can have a roughness to your carpet without it being overly exertive. The detailing needs to be both minimal and in theme. Using the spruce is a good idea in this situation. Couple of workbenches and a pot on top. All of these match the palette that we've been following without standing out too much and just fitting in with everything that we've made. Also chairs like this work really well and of course you need to just adapt to what you have. I started off making my carpet really small, but found that it worked better if I extended it out. Adding some bookshelves also works, but be careful with bookshelves, they can stand out if they're not integrated properly. So put it on top of something, behind something, integrate it into some surroundings. Even armor stands work really well, but bookshelves on their own are a no-no. Overall, I think I'm pretty happy with the bedroom design. Everything that I've put in doesn't look out of place. You could even put in some paintings. I don't normally do paintings because I think that the colours kind of clash normally, but in this situation, it's kind of the pride of the room considering you're living in a cave. 
I love the homeliness that this offers despite being a cave. It's unique. I love the fact that integrating something that you made into something that Minecraft gave you is an excellent skill to have. And I think it's quite commendable. If you found a house like this, you'd be like, wow, this is pretty cool, it's inventive, and it didn't take too much effort. Lots of people really do belittle me for saying, oh, you can't get that many resources in survival. Okay, yeah, I get that, but this is normally in creative. And to be fair, all of these resources are readily available. So if you can't be bothered to make the cave build yourself, you're just lazy. Anyway, everyone, thank you very much for watching. I loved making this video. I didn't like voicing over it because it was first person, meaning it took a long time. There was like 40 minutes of footage to cut down, speed up, lots of editing, 32 audio files. That's nuts. Usually I do it in like 10. So, <laughs> thank you very much for watching everyone, thank you to BotBox the crew member for helping me with this video. Goodbye!